What's up guys, this is Amir and you're watching Electrical Infinity. The main aim of this video is to explain you people how to do designing of emergency lighting as per the standards and what are the objectives of it. The objective of emergency lighting is to safeguard occupants from injury in case of an emergency by providing adequate visibility to see the evacuation route and by having adequate identification of exits by providing exit signage to indicate the evacuation route. Emergency lighting is used when the supply to the normal lighting fails. It includes illuminated emergency exit signs and emergency escape lighting. Apart from these two, I am going to also discuss various other things throughout this video. It includes type of emergency illuminates which are surface mounted, recessed, suspended, maintained and non-maintained type. Also I will be discussing in this video the type of electricity supply to this emergency lighting which are of two types. The first one is central supply system and the second one is single point system at the end of the video. Now let's begin with the installation of emergency exit signs. There are three types of emergency exit signs. The first one is surface mounted, second one is recessed and the third one is suspended emergency luminates. Let's go through together to the manufacturer data sheet for emergency exit sign selection. There are two main things you should consider while selecting the emergency exit sign. The first one is maximum viewing distance and the second one is classification which depends on longitudinal and transverse planes of this luminaire. The manufacturer data sheet will give you information about the spacing between emergency light and the emergency exit sign as well as the mounting height. The mounting height should not be more than 2.7 meter. In our project our ceiling height is 3 meters but we are going to consider as 2.7 meter because the uh, maximum mounting height is 2.7 meters. So the distance between the emergency light and emergency exit sign should be not more than 5.7 or 5.8 meters as per this table. So I'm gonna use this clever fit exit sign for our project of the restaurant. This is a wall mounted or surface mounted exit sign with IP rating of 20 and the maximum viewing distance is 24 meters and the classification is you can see on this table. The other type of exit signs are recess type which means that the control part of this luminaire is inside the ceiling as you can see and the next one is the suspended one and this one is used when the ceiling height is very high so that your emergency exit sign is not mounted more than 2.7 meters. This is our project of a restaurant which we are going to use for designing of emergency exit signs and emergency lighting luminaires. At this development site we have got four main exit and we have to redirect people to this exit with the help of our emergency exit signs. This one is an exit sign with the arrow and it will give you the direction of the exit. So this one is without arrow and this will indicate you to go straight for an exit. The maximum viewing distance of this exit sign is 24 meters and care should be taken that your design is implemented with these distances. So that people standing 24 meters from here can see it but not more than 24 meters. And you're gonna also place an emergency exit sign at the other door which is which indicates the straight from here not the arrow or directional sign. So if you see the distance it's not more than 2 24 meters it's way less than 10 meters to 15 meters and people standing there can see and at this one more exit we are going to place an arrow directional exit signs uh, so that people standing over here can see this exit sign arrow directional and they know that they have to go from here to exit this site so the distance is not more than 24 meters again and we have to use one more exit signs at our main door so that people coming out from this uh, kitchen area can see the exit so we are going to copy this and paste it here near the main entrance door which indicates the straight from here thus we have placed four emergency exit signs to evacuate customers from these restaurants as well as some help to the kitchen staff as well and we are going to also place an emergency exit sign at the back door of the kitchen this is the back door of the kitchen for exit and you can place one more exit sign here now we have to design our exit signage so that the people in the kitchen the staff in the kitchen can evacuate this building when there is an emergency I'm gonna place an emergency exit sign with the right directional arrow here so that people in this section of the kitchen can exit by taking a right turn. So you can see here people can take a right turn and they will see a door here. So we have to place one more right directional arrow here at this 
exit door of the kitchen so that people can take a one right turn and the second right turn through the door to find the main exit door the next design is for the washing area so for people coming out from the washing area uh, can't see any of the exit sign so we have to place an exit sign at a place where people from the washing area can see it so if someone comes out from the washing area they can see this exit sign in the corridor now we also need to provide the emergency exit sign for this area of the kitchen so if we provide a right directional arrow from here the people in this corridor of the kitchen can see this exit sign and they can exit through this back door of the kitchen so we are not gonna redirect the people through this uh, other door of the kitchen because it, it is a longer road so i'm placing a right directional exit sign here so that people from the kitchen area and the washing area can follow this shorter road for exit and uh, also the people in the cloakroom and toilet can follow the same road by coming out from this door and if they have a look on the right side they can see the exit sign indicating right from here straight from here and for the people in the warehouse and the garbage area they can follow this exit through this door so we are going to provide a one more exit sign at this door lastly we need to provide an exit sign at the public toilet of the restaurant so if you can see here if someone exit from this door they can see there is just one door so we don't need an exit sign at this door once we come out from this door we can see that there are two doors here so people will get confused with what door is the exit door thus we need to provide an exit sign at the main exit door of the public toilet there are also jumbo size emergency exit signs that provide some maximum viewing distance of more than 50 meters or 100 meters and these are applicable to airports or warehouses or factories where the requirement for maximum viewing distance is more than 50 or 100 meters so as per the as2293 standards the mounting height of these emergency exit signs should not be less than 2 meters and should not be more than 2.7 meters in order to calculate the maximum viewing distance of these emergency exit signs we have got a formula so the formula is maximum element height is equals to maximum viewing distance divided by 160 so you need to uh, divide with the maximum distance which is 32 meters divided by 160 so we are going to get a 200 mm of element height so this is the element height and it should be 200 mm for providing a maximum viewing distance of 32 meters the standard sizes are 100 150 200 and 250 for this element height this is how the straight from here and directional emergency exit signs look this one is straight from here this one is left from here and the last one is right from here Emergency exit sign must be turned on all the times irrespective of means operating or not. With this we have finished the designing of emergency exit signs. Now let's jump on to the second part which is the designing of emergency exit luminaires. Emergency exit luminaires are of two types which are surface and recessed and they are maintained or non-maintained which I will be discussing later at the end of the video. Emergency lighting is not required in single dwelling house, apartments, a boarding house or backpackers house. If the distance of travel from the door of the unit is not greater than 6 meters to a fire isolated exit. But if the distance of travel from the door of the unit is greater than 6 meters to the fire isolated exits, emergency lighting is required in any passageway, corridor, hallway of this type of buildings. Whereas when it comes to residential and commercial places like offices, shops, restaurants and car parks, emergency lighting is required in every building with a floor area of over 300 square meter. Every passageway, corridor, hallway should have emergency exit signs and emergency lighting and any room larger than 100 square meter which does not open to a corridor that have emergency lighting we need to provide an emergency lighting in that room as well and last one is any room larger than 300 square meter should be provided with emergency lighting the sole occupancy or the residential areas which are part of these commercial places uh, like for uh, it might include the apartments in an office or any other places you need to provide a uh, exit signs and emergency exit lights at the sole occupancy units if it's greater than 300 square meter the spacing between the luminaires depends on the classification of these luminaires classification of luminaires decided depending on these two things which is ceo transverse planes and c90 longitudinal planes but you don't need to calculate it because this classification is usually provided on the manufacturer data sheet 
And let's go through in detail with the manufacturer data sheet. So the select for the selection of our emergency lights. This is a recessed emergency luminaire and it is a non-maintained type as you can see on the data sheet and its IP rating is 20 which means that it is dust proof and can be used in the kitchen but for the other areas where the lights are exposed to water for example the bathrooms or swimming pool so you need to use a minimum IP rating of 44 these are the classification of LED luminaires and you can see depending on the mounting height or ceiling height the distance between the two LED luminaires is decided let's consider for example it's 2.7 meter and our mount distance between the two lights should be 16.5 meters should not be more than 16.5 at this restaurant the ceiling height is 3 meters but for the selection of this uh, distance between the emergency luminaires I am considering the ceiling height to be uh, 2.7 meters and the distance between luminaires should be 14.4 meters as per the uh, table I have shown you here so I am drawing a circle of 7. 2 meters which is 7200 mm and I'm grouping it together so that it could be helpful to place this emergency luminaire on our development side. So I'm not going to start from the right side because there is no intersection here. If you start from the left side with the intersection area of the restaurant they have got uh, corridors intersecting from three ways. So you can start from that location. I'm going to place an our emergency light here at the center of the intersection and make sure it is it is covering the uh, whole area so you can see this is uh, the circle is covered by the light from this LED and you can see here I am gonna place one more here the circles are touching each other and you can place one here but care should be taken that the distance from this exit sign on the right side is not more than 5.6 meter as uh, we have selected the exit sign uh, from the manufacturer data sheet we have seen that the distance is not more than 5.6 and we don't need here because we got exit signs with uh, LED luminaires in there as you can see the distance between these two emergency luminaires is not more than 14.2 meters and this is satisfactory now we have to focus on the designing of this uh, kitchen area so we need to place emergency light each in the section of the kitchen you can see these three sections so that all of these three cooking sections and the reception sections are uh, lit by the emergency light and this is the last section and we need emergency lighting here as well as per AS2293 standards, if the room is less than 100 square meter and it is leading to a corridor or area where there is emergency light, you don't need to provide an emergency light in that room. Same logic applies here, you don't need in the right toilet. In the left toilet, you have got two rooms, so you don't need one in the first one, but you need in the second one. With this, we have completed the designing of emergency lighting and emergency exit signs. We have successfully redirected people to the exit with the help of exit signs. And as you can see here, the emergency luminaires are placed as per the standards and as per the manufacturer's data sheet that indicates the distance between the LED luminaires. And we have also placed LED luminaires, emergency luminaires in the kitchen as well. As I have mentioned earlier, the IP20 rated can be used in office, apartments or rated outlet, but we need to use IP44s for bathrooms, gyms or aquatic centers. Uh, the, the, these LED luminaires are also surface mounted as you can see in the manufacturer sheet. So these are the maintained and non-maintained LED type table. So under non-maintained uh, LEDs, uh, under normal operation, this non-maintained LED doesn't work. But once there is a mains failure, these non-maintained LED luminaires are powered by battery. Uh, whereas the maintained luminaires works all the time during the normal operation as well as during the mains failure. The third option we got is non-maintained combined luminaires and in this one we got one non-maintained and one normal luminaire. So whenever there is a phase failure, the normal luminaire will not be working and the non-maintained luminaire will be working. So the fourth setup has got one normal luminaire and one emergency luminaire which is maintained type. Under normal operation both will be working. But under mains failure the normal light will not be working and the emergency light will be working. The classification of these luminaires are also specified in AS2293 standards. We got A, B, C, D and E classification of these LED luminaires and their distance between the luminaires too. Also the, the emergency luminaires on a stairway should be on the floor landing not on the intermediate landing. As you can see here this this is how we need to design the emergency luminaires for the stairways. 
this is a schematic for distribution board with self-contained system and you can see here we have got four phases for which are powering normal lighting and power circuit from from these phases we are going to connect it to normal lighting as well as to the emergency lighting these emergency lightings can be maintained or non maintained type with maintain type uh, they are turned on all at all the time and whenever there is a phase failure they are powered by a self contained system which might be a battery now the other type of a schematic of distribution board is a central supply system and in this the supply from mains is given to normal luminaires not to the emergency lights and we have got a phase failure relay connected uh, to these phases and this phase failure relay will detect the failure of supply and it will power the emergency luminaires from battery system. With this I have covered all the aspects of emergency lighting designing. Thanks for watching this video guys and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Electrical Infinity to learn electrical up to infinite. Keep watching, keep liking, take care.